Welcome to Game Crunch, your weekly video game podcast. My name is Blake Anastasia. With me today, we have Nick. Ew. And Brandon. Hello. We're here to talk about games and things. Games and things. Mm-hmm. And, well, let's see. Nintendo had a bunch of demos this week. I don't know it any did, of the things Brandon's been playing. Yeah. yeah. I actually played yeah. them like an hour ago. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, both of them. <laughs> they were announced today, and then I played them both. This is oh, really how all, all it is to it. Right. And uh, yeah, that's where we're going to start. And there was a bunch of announcements. Yeah, there was some stuff there. today at the at the Summer Game Fest. We'll, we can talk about that. Stuff and things. Yeah, there we are. That's what we're going to talk about. You guys ready to get started? Sounds good, yeah. yeah. All right, Brandon, you're up. All right. Uh, let me introduce to you what might end up being my favorite game of this entire year. If it is as good as the teaser bit that they put out for us to play today is this game is called metal hell singer this game is fucking amazing um so this is a game that is a first person shooter a lot like uh doom eternal or that sort of thing but you can only fire your gun on the beat of the song you can fire it at other times but you won't get points for it and it's an arcade game so like it'll start out like when you're going like one X and that sort of deal. I mean, you're going one X, like some of the instruments are playing and you're hearing like some, mostly like the instrumental portion of the song and that sort of deal. Uh, when you get like a two X multiplier combo, that sort of thing four X and so on, more instruments are added into the song and more instruments are added into the song and killing continuously without getting hit or without losing your combo is what allows the song to slowly build while you're completing the level. Eventually when you get to like 16 X, you add in like vocals And that's where this game is fucking amazing. This game decided to just go fucking ham. And every song that is in this game has been created for this game. But they use the bands such as Soilwork, System of a Down, Trivium, Dark Tranquility, Lamb of God, Arch Enemy, and Black Crown Initiate. If you like metal, you know hearing those names? That's fucking amazing. Because it's not like they just took their songs. Those bands made new music just for this game. And it is incredible what they have so far. In the demo, you get uh, an Arch Enemy song. And it is so incredibly good. And it's just probably one of the better both rhythm games and like hybrid first-person shooter weird thingies that I've played in a very 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 long time i i played the game that ended up actually being a um uh what's what's the word i'm looking for um a copy of this because essentially what happened was there was a game called bpm that came out in like 2020 towards the end of it and this game was announced at the beginning of 2020 uh bpm and i'm not going to get into a whole lot but essentially they took the assets from a uh, from the Paragon game that was canceled by Epic Games a long time ago, and they ended up making um, BPM. They made it pretty quickly, taking the general idea of Metal Hellsinger, and then Metal Hellsinger was delayed for like two years after that happened. Uh, BPM's a pretty decent game. It's actually a lot of fun, but Metal Hellsinger, the little bit that I was able to play today after it was announced at Summer Games Fest with a release date, uh, alone was infinitely better than bpm or any of the other rhythm first person shooters that i have ever played it is just incredible uh there's a demo of it right now on pc and it comes out on like console as well and it's just i mean if you like any of the bands i named you you owe it to yourself to check this out because it is great so there you go that's one of the games i played and i also played a game called a little to the left and uh this game is very weird so um alongside the summer games fest today there was a thing called the day of the indies day of the devs day of the devs that's it where they showed a bunch of indie games and stuff uh today and during day of the devs they showed one game that i was like that's a really weird concept and they announced at the end of it oh there's a demo out and i was like oh okay cool um it's essentially ocd the game so like you're you're presented with like a screen and like there's stuff all over the screen and 
you have to kind of organize the stuff, but it's done in such a way that um, it's just like really relaxing and a lot of fun as well. So like, for instance, there's one screen that has like three fruits and there are stickers all over the fruits. There's annoying, stupid little stickers and you have to like turn the fruits and rip the stickers off and that sort of thing um, and do that with all three of them. So like spin them around, rip one off, spin it around, rip one off, that sort of deal and just have it so they're nice, clean, that sort of deal. And then there's another one where um, you have like just a whole bunch of papers, like receipts and letters and stuff. And you just kind of try to organize it on a desk to like fit every piece of thing that you have into that desk space. Um, and all of this sounds like very like just OK, that, whatever. Um, they decided to add like a little other element into it that makes it a little less relaxing. And that's that constantly your cat knocks all your shit over while you're trying to do it. Oh, so you'll have cat. you'll have cat paws come on the screen and and knock your shit over and then you have to do it again or you have to like do it while his paws are like uh, kind of swiping at the stuff that you're uh, trying to organize and honestly it's a really neat idea and then the way it was presented um, was um, when they were showing the trailer for it before I played the demo they stated something along the lines of um, doing like either weekly or monthly puzzles where they add more to the game. So like you may have that puzzle that you've already played, but you'll be able to go back to it and have like a different kind of puzzle using the one that you already had played. So like uh, they'll just, they'll change it up on you. So it'll give you like a reason to come back to the game other than just like your first playthrough. And it'll just be, they, they seem to like hint at that. It'll just be completely free. And it's like, oh, they'll have like a little calendar where it's like, oh yeah, we'll update this puzzle on this day and you'll have a new one to play and this, that, and the other. And uh, it just, it's really like cozy the way it's drawn and like the way it's designed. And then the actual gameplay is just like kind of relaxing and just in general, it's it's nice. It's a nice time. So yeah, fun game. And uh, yeah, those are the like two games I played because... Everything else has been like on my Steam Deck, and it's just been games I've already played in the past that I've been playing, such as like Vampire Survivor and stuff like that. Because I, I swear, I, I spent six hundred dollars just so I can play a three dollar game huh. on the go. <laughs> it happens. Yeah. I mean, what else would you do with it? Yeah, exactly. I. So there are other things like I have done with it, right? But like. It's emulation. I, I, it's, it's straight up like an emulator system as well. So, so there's oh, that. Yeah. yeah, and that's that's it. That's it. That's all I got to talk about. That's all there is. That's all there is. That's all there is. I've, I'm, see, I've actually been spending time in the hospital and in doctors' offices lately. So and that's why I wasn't here last week. And uh, yeah, um, I haven't really got to play that much. So, so there's okay. that. Uh, I did. I I do want to share a, an, an interesting little story, and maybe you guys can, we can have like a little conversation based off this as well. Okay. So we've talked about Game Pass and like how it's good for indie devs and this, that, and the other, and um, you know, it gets their thing out there. They get paid up front by Microsoft and whatnot. But I actually have some more information on that straight from uh some indie devs. Uh, out of nowhere, actually. So I had a conversation with someone uh, who was very like high and mighty, like sniffing their own farts, essentially, uh, about how Game Pass is shit and this, that, and the other, and it's like not good for uh, people. I don't remember exactly how it was, but it was just it was a really bad conversation. This person was like, kind of like super obnoxious about it. It was just on a, on a comment. And I was like, okay, whatever. Um, and so I was sharing the story about how that person was like, so rude and everything on my stream. And then um, I was like saying, you know, I, I've heard so many things about like game pass actually being good for indie devs and whatnot and helping them out and this, that, and the other. And that's when someone told me that essentially the money that devs get paid for is very misconstrued mm -hmm. um, and that um, it's not actually correct what a lot of people assume and that a lot of indie devs actually just put their product on the service 
in order to get their content out there so that when it comes off of the service, people might want to buy it. Um, and more so that they don't get paid anywhere near as much as people think, and they don't really get paid a lot in the first place, and it is better for them to go with something such as, like, um, something like Epic Game Store, which is awful in its own right, and this is their words, not mine, and uh, other such things, or just, like, release it yourself on, like, GOG or on Steam. And I was like, okay, that's cool, but, like, how do you know this? And they were like, ah, yes, um... I made the game you're playing right now. And I was like, oh, "Oh, okay. (laughs) And that was really weird to me, because we were, like, we were fucking streaming at the time, and the guy, like, was having this conversation with me, and I was like, I wasn't getting, like, uppity with them, but I was, like, I was genuinely curious how they, like, knew all this information, and the guy just dropped that he made the game that we were currently streaming. And I was like, oh, okay. The guy stayed there for, like, three hours just chatting with us about random shit about the industry and about, um like the indie scene and all this other stuff. And it was a very, very interesting conversation. Um, uh, He essentially put like subscription services on blast because like the only way you're getting paid the big bucks for your amount of downloads is if you are a triple a publisher that's on there. So like the third party triple A's and like, obviously the first party don't matter, but the third party triple A's that end up on there, they're getting paid like, per so many downloads uh indies just get like a cut at the beginning and that's it so if your game becomes like a massive hit well you accepted that cut that you were given at the beginning and now you're kind of fucked um and like i was like that that actually really sucks you know because like what if something takes off like massively like i know it's a meme now but what if among us had released on game pass first and then like that was the way it was played and that sort of thing. And then like, you know, millions, tens of millions, you know, you know, the, all those people that played it, they didn't have to spend any kind of money on it. And they were only given like a small upfront fee. And then that's that, you know, mm-hmm. uh, that, that would have been bad for that company in general, for that indie developer in general then. And, and I see why uh, several indie people are just like, yeah, I don't want to deal with these subscription things after talking to this guy. And then, and he was very nice about everything. Um, they He gave us, like, even little hints about his game while we were playing it. He told us this little secret where if you, um, if you watch the credits or if you even just, like, scroll through the credits really quickly, you unlock, like, a secret um, head that you can wear on your, um, your character. And the game we were playing was called um, Hypercharged Unboxed. And Hypercharged Unboxed is a really cool like tower defense and and first person shooter hybrid where um you like build your towers at the beginning and then you start the round and then you also have like guns and other items you can pick up off the floor but you're playing in a like a bedroom or a kitchen and whatnot and you're playing as toys fighting other toys so it, it's kind of like if you remember an old game called army Mar- men surges heroes it, it's kind of like that Oh, yeah. um, but like it has all these other toys in it and everything. So you have like uh, it had like Boglins, uh, like not actual Boglins, but their version of Boglins. It had like the the old robot toy that's like wind up and like come. Yeah, it had that. And each one of the toys that you fight, they um they have their own attacks, and you have to like build up your base and protect it based around what those toys were. And like they even had like Beyblades that would be dropped in from the sky and everything. And they could really destroy the walls, so you'd have to, like, set up turrets and glue traps and stuff to get them stuck so that they would not get to your base. And it was a generally really, really fun game and very interesting. But, I mean, like, the real story at the end of the day was just being able to talk to the person that made it and them being, like, so open about talking about the indie scene right now. It was was really cool. So... Uh, yeah, that's my story. Um, play Hypercharge Unboxed if you get a chance. I know it just released on Switch, um, and it's a lot of fun. So there you go. That's it. Okay. That is all I have to say. That is all she wrote. All mm-hmm. That's all it was. That is the bottom of the bucket. Barrel, but yeah, sure. I can go either way, can I? Maybe. Uh, I guess. I feel like I've heard bulls. I don't know. Yeah, probably. Is it that important to Google? I don't know. I don't give a shit. Uh, 
what was I going to say? Oh, I was going to talk about what I had been playing, which was, I mean, just for the things to talk about, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. just the two demos that Nintendo had out, they were big this last week. The Mario Strikers Battle League had its play weekend. Mm-hmm. I did get to try a couple matches with that. I don't know if you guys had a chance or not. No, I, I did not. were talking about it. They had really shitty times for Eastern time. At least I thought so. I didn't check really yeah, It was time. either like really early in the morning or late as fuck. Of course. Yeah. Of course it was. Perfect if you live on the West Coast, but not so great on the East Coast. Mm-hmm. But I did catch a, I think I did like two or three matches. And it was fun. It was Mario Strikers, mm-hmm. I would say. It was a bit chaotic because, I mean, A, you don't really know what you're doing. And maybe that's just because I didn't really finish the tutorials. But I, I think that was mostly had to do with the fact that now, instead of controlling everything yourself, you have an actual other person to compete with. So mm-hmm. on your team. Um, so things are you're passing back and forth between like the other person on the team or, you know, if the ball play gets too far away from where you are, you'll switch into like something closer okay. automatically. It was fine. I mean, it was Mario Strikers didn't seem that different to me from what I remember from playing the last one. Okay. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Uh, but it's, you know, it's pretty crazy. It's got like power ups and, you know, super crazy, uh, shots you can do like mm, Luigi spins the tornadoes or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I don't, I don't know. It's not something I said it to Nick last week. Like, I don't know what it is. The Mario sports games are just, I'm not in a point anymore where I would pay full price for them. So, and that's kind of how I feel about this too. It's fun to be great. If it was like 30 bucks instead of 60, but you know, mileage, mileage may vary depending on like, yeah, how much, you know, I feel there. like the Mario sports games have kind of run their course, but I, I, I do like, I'm excited for this one. Cause we haven't had one since the Wii. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So whereas like we've had like all these Mario golfs and all these yeah golf and tennis have been on pretty much every system. yeah exactly that's that's what I was gonna say I feel like years. this has a better chance of feeling fresh and not like Nintendo's version of fresh where they just keep trying to reinvent the wheel every single iteration they make they've had enough time that they haven't had to continuously pump out iterations of strikers and as such i have a feeling that this one might actually be really good and i hope that i'm not wrong but i have a feeling that this one will be good because they haven't had enough time to fuck it up yet so that's 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 my current theory well, and i'm sticking to it made by um show what's the developer when they did Luigi's Mansion. The last oh, one. um, fuck. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, you guys know who I'm talking about, though. I do, um, but I don't know who it is. Ne- is that yeah. not Next Level? Um, is it that? It is Next Level, I think, yeah. Is it Next Level? I think you might be right. Yeah, Holy that's shit. who it is. Next Level, and they did, um, they did the last Mario Strikers. Nintendo bought them. They're officially first party now. Mm. So, as opposed to the other Mario sports games, which are generally done outside of nintendo mm, mm. um either by like a close like third party this one's actually first party so that's that it plays well like i don't really have any complaints about it other than i just don't think it's a game i would play enough to get 60 dollars out of but that's just i me. feel that way about like all of the switch games more or less <laughs> lately though that's that's like that's the biggest issue like i look at their quality uh, with because there's been so many missteps lately. Like for instance, with Mario Golf, Mario Golf was fucking awful. It just was. And then they were like, Ah, yes, DLC. We'll release it a year later and get fucked. And then everyone was like, All right, well, I just I don't care about your game anymore. Then it's over. Know. You know that is that is a point of contention that a lot of people have been having lately. Uh, I think more specifically for games like this, some games it makes a little bit more sense on. Like, I feel like the kind of like first party, like, or sorry, like the, like the third person, like adventure games, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like where they added all that extra content into like, um, Mario Galaxy or things like that. No, 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 those are fair. Those are fair. That felt like a complete game, but I feel like they're side games and most specifically like their sports games. They don't feel complete. Like, let's look at another game that just released. Switch Sports. We're missing so many general games that were in the original Wii Sports. And then 
you know, they're like, oh, those are coming later. And it's like, okay, well then, why didn't you just release this game later instead of like it's waiting? To come out right now. I know that, but my point is like. <laughs> They could have released this later and had it feature complete, but instead they're like, no, 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 let's just give you six different sports, and three of them are technically the same. So, go fuck yourself. And it's like, alright, so we get three sports. Cool, 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 cool. And and if you're wondering, I'm talking about badminton, tennis, and volleyball. All kind of essentially feel... Volleyball does not feel the same. Not even close. Hold on, yeah, hold, on. hold on, hold on. Let me explain myself. No, we, Let me explain myself. There's a ball in a net, so I mean, I, I see. No, 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 no. That is not my point. My point is the general motions that are used to play each one of those games. I have seen it. I have I, I experienced it. I don't own the game. I've my brother does, and as such, I've like actually got to play it. <laughs> but in general, it's just the same kind of game play. I like still, no, I same... still completely disagree on volleyball. Tennis and badminton, absolutely. Volleyball <laughs> has you doing like spiking and bumping. You mean when you throw the spinning? ball in tennis and then you swing and you hit it, you know, like that sort of thing? Like it's but the you're, same you're not thing not serving. Volleyball. No, 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 no. I'm saying the the serving, the serving. I, I know when you're spiking when it comes to you and you have to like you know. Yeah, but you also have to set that sort of deal. Like the serving is such a minor part of volleyball. It is, it is. But but here's the other thing I'm talking about. It's the same general assets also reused for those three games. Yes, we have a different ball. Yes, we have a different way that we move our arms. But it's still the same general thing. As There's opposed no to something like just, it's, as it's opposed to something like if we that. were to have if we were to have boxing, yeah, if we were to have golf, I, if you were to have those sort of things, that would be a vastly different game mode. Or even baseball, that would be a vastly different game mode compared to having volleyball, badminton, and tennis. I feel like you're grasping with volleyball. I really like, don't I, think I am. I'll give you badminton and I'll give you badminton and tennis any day, times a thousand. But is it volleyball? Like, it's probably the most technical of any of the sports that are even in the package. Dude, you just fucking swing your hands around like it's no. nobody's business and still win that. You absolutely can because <laughs> no. I straight up did, dude. Okay, listen. All right, let me let me let me give you my thing with volleyball uh, granted i do know that the first game that you play is 100 percent bots because that's what they do in these sort of situations just in general um it, you know to get you in there get you that sort of thing um but my point for that is like the general motion it doesn't need to be uh, let me see if i can find a way to explain this better okay um i just kind of felt like i was just just swinging my arms. I didn't feel like I was into that. And it was the same with soccer. Soccer kind of felt like I was just swinging my arms instead of, cause I didn't have the strap for the leg and everything. And I don't even know if that's something you can do right now. It's not uh, I didn't look in. Okay. I didn't look into that, but it, it, it felt like a disconnect between what was going on in the game and like what I was doing that that's, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, for that element, that sort of deal. I, I did not think volleyball was uh, as <laughs> I didn't think volleyball was as deep as you're making it sound. I, it seemed honestly, I wholeheartedly disagree with you on volleyball. Okay. Soccer, I'll even say like I'll agree. Like there's a big disconnect on soccer, and I think that was a I think that was a tough sell for them in this package. Because I, mean, I guess like the the timing is different for other for for volleyball compared to other things, and I get that. But like. <sighs> I don't know. It just volleyball felt so half-assed. See, I, I, like just, I said, I, I, my experience with volleyball is it's far more technical than the other ones, than probably anything like else said, in that package. If you were to go, if you were to go with like timing and that sort of deal, then yeah, I kind of agree in that aspect. But like, I don't know. Uh, volleyball felt stupid to me. I, it is stupid, but I do think it's the most technical. Like, I don't enjoy volleyball. It's probably my uh, not my least favorite sport on there, but one of them. But it is. What's your least it, favorite? Uh, and what is it badminton? I was gonna. I was thinking badminton, but I also <laughs> kind of think that I, I, I kind of don't really like the sword fighting either. Honestly. The sword fighting seems really dumbed down compared to um, fuck. What was it? Sports resort? Is that what it was? Yeah, sports resort had the sword fighting. Yeah, I don't know if it's really that because this one had like different swords. I don't even remember if sword like the one on. 
Fortress Story had all like, the different swords with different abilities. I think it's just because it's faster and just kind of like it's something kind of seems a little off with it. I'm Maybe. not really sure. I don't, I just kind of, that one just kind of just doesn't really do it for me sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the bowling's fantastic. Like I, I do like the bowling a lot. I think that they did a really good job with that one. Um, I mean, which, granted it's hard to fuck up bowling, but um, I, it was, but you know, it was still good. Yeah. It was still very yeah, exactly. good. Still very competent. Still works. Totally fine. I mean, uh, yeah, I don't I have a problem with that. And I think tennis and badminton are fine for what they are. I don't really have any complaints about those. Soccer's different. I kind of want to see what it'll be like once they add in the, the kicking stuff. Mm-hmm. But we'll see. Um, then I said sword fighting, just not a fan. Of, and volleyball, I think mm-hmm. it, it's, it's very technical. I think that would be a hard one to have. Like a group of people at your house. Oh, absolutely not. I, I, yeah, absolutely not. That, that's, 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 uh, that's not something I would, I could see being like an actual party one. Uh, that, yeah. that's one I would see having to be for the online specifically. Yeah, or unless well, you have so some friends who are like really good, super so into it's like, volleyball. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, I don't. I'm just. I like. I, I think I. I don't remember what I said last time. I think I just said it was. You know, it's it's okay. It's not bad. It'd probably be more fun if you have a group of people over, which is kind of like what Wii Sports was. And I don't think it's particularly revolutionary in this day and age because um, that 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 magic was lost mm-hmm. with the Wii generation. Yeah. Oh. Go back to my original point, though, which is that it doesn't feel as varied. Like, it just doesn't feel as varied as, like, the original one. And as such, it feels like it is missing something. And we've already been told that it's missing stuff and that content will be coming in the future. And it's just like what they did with fucking Mario Golf, where Mario Golf was like, a let's release. I think they had five courses on launch or something. Oh, and yeah. then, yeah. like, all of them were, like, a grassland, a rainy grassland. And, and like, most of them were designed around the speed golf aspect of the game, which, fuck, it sucked. And then, like, later they they released, like, the Mario Golf stages in Mario Golf, such as, like, um, New Donk City. I haven't gone back and played them. I've heard they're good, but I haven't gone back and played them because I just don't fucking care. And I feel like that's going to be the same thing that happens with we we uh not we sports resort but um with uh nintendo switch. switch sports or whatever the fuck it is it's a tricky thing with what they're doing i mean it's a very what they're doing shit like they're okay like okay in i would say four five years no 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 because that'd be when the switch came out I, all right i'm just gonna say 10 i'm just gonna say 10 and leave it at that Ten years ago, everyone would hail Nintendo as the, oh, they're not doing loot boxes. Oh, they're not EA. At least they're not Ubisoft. And now they've literally became that. They have quite literally become like those companies, where they just regurgitate the same shit over and over and over again. And it's honestly not good. And it's really like... There's okay, so just to rewind, there's sports stuff have always been like this. Mario Golf has been iterative since what is it for the last the 20 3DS years. one was infinitely better than the one that's on Switch, and it had content. It had more content than the Switch released with. What I mean when I say like they're just regurgitating, doing the same thing as like Ubisoft is they're releasing a game that's half baked or less than half baked, and they're like, "Fuck it, they'll buy it anyway, and we'll just fix it in post." It is quite literally what Nintendo is doing at this point in time, and it's it's just not a good look. See, sure, you get some games that are really good, like the recent Kirby game, for instance, which had content, was fun and enjoyable, and you know that sort of thing. You get your Mario Odysseys, you you get those sort of games, but then you get stuff like you know Mario Golf, like Switch Sports, and like <sighs> well, Nintendo's <sighs> Nintendo's how do I put this? Nintendo's kind of like line of development through the Switch has been put out a game and put out free DLC within the first year. I think it's just to keep people talking about it. 
Like, you know, bring it back up in the news cycle, make it relevant again. Is that why it took two and a half years for Mario Party 10 to get free content? That one, I think, was... That one is... I mean, we laughed about it even when it happened. That's an outlier. (laughs) Yeah, that was an outlier. I just wanted to make that joke, because I felt like it was needed. No, I mean, I don't disagree. It's weird. I think that was, honestly, I think that was them like, hey, we really want to test this shit out for the new Mario Party that's come for superstars, Mm -hmm. but we don't want to, like, blow our hand right now, so let's Mm -hmm. put out this demo and just see and, you know, go from there or whatever. But, I mean, you have stuff like, you know, Animal Crossing. Even if you didn't get the, like, the Happy Home Paradise or whatever DLC, like, that last DLC drop from last year was huge on its own. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you had, like the end, like even Pokemon Arceus had another DLC drop this year. Like they do, and, and Arceus had a lot of content. I think Arceus is a really good game. I don't yeah. give a shit what anyone says about how bad it looks. <laughs> yeah, it does. But have you looked at anything else on the Switch? And it's um, also fantastic. <laughs> it's yeah, it's no, just, a really good game. Sports games. The problem is, if you're gonna do that same cycle, it's like, what do you hold back? You either hold back modes or you hold back characters, and both of those kind of seem back shitty with people. And I don't disagree with that, like at all. I mean, that's what I say. I mean, but at the end of the day, even if oh, Metroid even Dread if, was like, so good, I was like, "What?" There's another game that Nintendo released where they knocked it out of the park, and I was like, "What was it?" And then I just, I just remembered Metroid Dread. Metroid yeah, Dread was did, so fucking good. And they did two free DLC drops for that too. It was like what, the extra hard mode, mm-hmm. and I guess the extra easy mode, and then the boss rush mode. Neither of those do anything for me. I think mm-hmm. it's cool that they do it. And what I was going to say with the sports stuff, I mean, I guess you probably can discount this if you're listening because I don't really play the sports stuff anyways. However, mm-hmm. like, I don't think if, like, I was sitting between this game and be like, oh, my goodness, there's 10 more characters than there was before. I guess I'll drop $60 on it. No, I don't really give a fuck about that anyways. Yeah. So I don't know. Like, I, I can see both sides on it. I think that... I mean, I understand what Nintendo is trying to do there. I think it comes off as disingenuous for a lot mm-hmm. of people, but I really, I don't even know if the stuff they put out makes it games that much better. I feel anyway. like, okay, so like Nintendo's taking the same approach with their sports games and like, uh, I don't know. Um, I think I feel like too, yeah. the one last. Yeah, I'm just gonna say the sports game. All right, go on. Yeah, I would sorry. just, I would, I, I think I would be much more upset if these things were like paid DLC. But it's just oh, yeah, it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. I don't know, who fucking cares? Oh my goodness, Daisy's available now. Yeah. I don't fucking give a shit. Like, so, I think I'm looking at this like, okay, so I mentioned earlier uh, on, you know, I also have emulation on my Steam Deck. Uh, I've been playing Toadstool Tour on my Steam Deck uh, from the GameCube. That game's excellent. I'm just to say that right now. That game is excellent. If Toadstool Tour was released now, instead of me unlocking those characters, I'd have to wait six months to get them given to me as a free DLC. Mm. And that shit really sucks when you think of things like that. I would rather have a feature-complete game with the ability to unlock characters and to extend life that way. But what I think Nintendo is doing, and I'm going to say the game that started this entire fucking trend, and it really sucks because the game is excellent that started this trend, but Nintendo's stupid, so they saw it work with one thing, and then they were like, we can do that with fucking everything. Let's fucking do it. Let's do it. Let's fucking do it. And that's Splatoon. Splatoon is a games-as-a-service game. Yeah. Through and through. It 100% is. And it is a excellent game. It is legitimately an excellent game. Uh, Splatoon 1 was great. Splatoon 2 was great. I have no doubt that Splatoon 3 will be great as well. They've been fantastic games across the board. But Nintendo then saw the player retention they were able to keep with Splatoon. And when they release something that is even remotely competitive, like a sports game, they're like, we can do that shit again. And we will do that shit again. And it doesn't work for those games because it just doesn't have the same feeling. It's not competitive in nature where it's like a like a very clear 
a very clear online oriented community and hub and that sort of deal when i used to play mario strikers and that sort of deal i would play that at like fucking not land parties but i'd play that in like college dorms with friends i would sit down and chill at my friend's house and we would play those late into the night the same with like smash brothers and that sort of deal those games work that way Games like Splatoon work the way they are, and that's the way they should be, but Nintendo saw how well Splatoon did and the staying power it had, and they were like, oh, duh, competitive game, uh, what's more competitive than sports? So let's just do all of our games like this shit. And it just, it doesn't work. And I feel like Nintendo actually took that line of thinking because they are that fucking stupid. That's I. I mean, to some degree with the sports stuff, probably. I mean, they're taking the wrong message home with those games, I think. Mm-hmm. But I, like, I don't dis- necessarily disagree with, like, the If the Nintendo made player. another... Uh, the single player? What was that? I said, what, they're, what they're taking away from, like, the single player stuff, like, that seems to to do be doing well it's like hey what do you mean like the doing like uh paid like expansions do with, like, or that sort of thing or with uh the, the free Odyssey. yeah when they're putting like hey like here's this extra free content come back and play it again and it gets people back in six months later you know yeah but, no yeah, I, that has a different feel what they do would they like drip feed characters or stages and they launch a game with very little to begin with that has the feeling of splatoon 2 or splatoon 1 or just a games as a service game yeah, I feel when like and you add content that, to an already feature complete game such as something like Luigi's Mansion, Mario Kart 8, which is the outliner when it comes to sports games, Animal Crossing, Smash Brothers, uh, fucking Pokemon Arceus, you know, or even Breath of the Wild, which they did. Like when you do something like that, that has a content update, a uh, you know, a free DLC, a add-on, that sort of deal. It, it gets those games back in circulation. It makes people want to go out and buy them if they haven't already bought them because of the new update that comes out. And the same thing's done with like PlayStation, where they added like a uh, new game plus mode into such and such game or whatever. And it's like, oh, okay, now that I can play that. Um, I actually want to play that. So I'm going to go back and the player retention is back for the single player game. But what Nintendo is doing with their sports games is like release it in an unfinished state, finish it later. They're a hundred percent going games as a service with almost all of the sports titles. Like I said, Mario Kart 8 is the outlier, but then again, even with that, that started on the Wii U, so how much of an outlier is that really? So, yeah. <laughs> what were you going to say, Nick? I was going to say, I feel like the content that's being drip-fed, though, that, that kept Splatoon alive was mm-hmm. more so the, uh, what was it, the, those competition things that they had? They yeah, yeah, out? that and the guns. Like, they yeah. introduced new guns, which then changed up the meta of the gameplay, you know, exponentially. But, you know, introducing new character in tennis doesn't really do anything for anyone, you know? Okay. Uh, and yeah. It's a very big difference, and that's the point I was trying to make. I, I have nothing against Splatoon, Nick. Um, I, I actually, know, I, was just, they, I was just curious, because like, that's that me, so, like, the, the, drip, the, the content that, you know, yeah. keep people coming back for more was the, uh, the Splatfest. Yeah, exactly, exactly. They did that one correctly. They have not done their other games that they've done things like that with correctly, so... That's that's where I stand. And Nintendo really is just frustrating me at this point. So much so that, like, I look at their games and I'm like, I'll wait a year before playing that because then it'll actually be finished. So that's the way I've been looking at some of their games going forward. That's why I didn't buy Nintendo Switch Sports. So, yeah. That's fair. Any other I haven't bought Triangle Strategy either, but I, I think that's a totally different story. I just well, haven't cared to. That's, I mean, that's a Square Enix game, anyways. Yeah. So it's, I mean, that one definitely is a different story. I still haven't played the demo for that one. <laughs> I've heard it; it's good. I've heard um, it's a really good game too. Yeah, I heard it's like the team that, like, you know, the um, Octopath Traveler team. And Octopath Traveler is a really good game. It's long, but it's a really good game. So. Um, and actually, speaking of strategy games, the other demo that I played this week was Fire Emblem Three Hopes. Fire, well, I guess it's Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes, I guess. Is, is that the name of it? I think so. I know it's three it hopes. is Three Hopes. Neat. Yeah. Okay. So it yep. was kind of like a, a re, 
imagining of the three houses story. Okay. Um, so this is one of those, it is kind of nice. It's like one of those, like, uh, basically like beginning of the game, carry over your progress kind of demos. Mm, mm. I only played the first stage. So okay. just to kind of get a feel of it. I mean, it plays a lot like other Warriors games, really. So I, I mean, love Warriors games. Suppliers there. Huh? I said I love the Warriors games. Oh, I know you do. So, yeah, I mean, so th- there's no surprise there with that kind of stuff. It did. I don't remember if the other one had this, too, but it does have, like, the classic casual mode from Fire Emblem where it's like, like, if your characters die, they don't come back. It's just the mode you want to play. And I was like, uh, not really in a Warriors game. <laughs> so I'm going to pass on that for now. Uh, so, yeah, that, the other thing that I thought was really interesting in this one. So you do you play as a new character. Your main character in this game is a new character. Mm-hmm. I forgot what his like generic name is. It's something dumb. Uh and he's like purple haired. Whatever. But then you like then you get to like use or create Byleth too. They're like Oh, oh what was that? What was that silver haired demon called again? And then it gives you like the choice between male or female Byleth, and then you get to name him as well. I think the biggest twist though is like Byleth actually has voice acting in this game. Whoa, really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So he actually like talks and will talk to you as opposed to all he did in the last game, which is like, Durr. so that, I mean, that, that, that is the thing. Uh, I don't, I don't really have too terribly much to say about this though. I mean, it is, it is very much a fire emblem warriors game and it is very much a three houses game. Mm. It plays like warriors. Um, the story seems interesting i'm kind of curious to see how it ties into the three houses like what kind of direction they take it they didn't Mm -hmm. say like all the different houses are there so i assume there's like branching storylines depending on like what house you choose or whatever um it even has it looked like the dlc characters in there as well there's a sizable amount of characters to play as which i was pretty surprised with i mean fire emblem warriors the original had a good amount but this one looked like it had quite a few characters from each house so nice. yeah i mean i thought i mean so far so good it's a warriors game it mm-hmm. comes out in two weeks so i'm sure i'll have more to talk about between now and then i'll i'll finish up the rest of the demo and see what's there but otherwise i mean it, it plays identically to any other warriors game i've played before you, you know, know i just a weak I'm attack sorry. strong attacks and you know those kind of things so what are you gonna say i was gonna say i just thought of another game i didn't even bother attempting to play yeah I've never played Age of Calamity. Oh, really? I'm surprised. I, um, it's just it was coming out at the same time as a lot of other things, and then I just kind of forgot about it. But now talking about this has reminded me, and I'm like, maybe I should play Age of Calamity. I loved Age of Calamity. Like, loved, 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 loved Age of Calamity. I mean, Hyrule Warriors was incredibly good, so. And I thought they did a a really good job of tying Mm -hmm. the... Age of Calamity into, like, the Breath of the Wild mechanics to some degree. Mm. So there is some, like, follow-through there. I thought it was an interesting take on the story, although depending on how Zelda purist people are, they get pretty upset with that. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, I don't give a shit about Zelda's plot line. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, you'll probably have fun. And I thought they had interesting characters in there. Especially I mean, in a side games. game. Like, why the fuck would I give a shit about the plot line of a game that already has a timeline that's already convoluted? Why would I give a shit about that in a side game? You know? I just, just like, whatever, okay. Well, Brandon, they were all supposed to die. Oh, that's cool. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think regardless of what you think of the story, the mechanic was there just so you could have the old heroes Mm -hmm. and the new heroes so i mean it worked well i thought it was super cute i thought it had a lot of personality Mm -hmm. there's a shit ton of content in that game so yeah i know they released a bunch of dlcs for it also and i think they've already released all of them right yeah they're all so now it's like feature complete now it's like it's been what a year and a half so perfect time to buy the game (laughs) So, I mean, I think that one's good. And you can see, too, like, they're definitely doing some more of the Fire Emblem mechanics mm. in this game as well. I mean, the last game, and I hadn't seen it yet in this one, just because I only played, like, basically the prologue stage. Mm-hmm. But in the last one, you know, they did have, like, the the weapon matching, the weapons triangle kind of thing. They had, um, you know, the ability to send units to other locations to, like, mm. take them over, like, things like that. 
I would assume those kind of mechanics are still there. This one also does bring back like the weapon durability too, where it's like, you know, some of your special moves are tied to weapon durability and your weapon can break depending on, you know, how often you use them. So, I mean, it, it feels like a Warriors game with Fire Emblem mechanics. It seems like it would be cool. So that's it. I enjoyed the last one. I didn't get in deep into that as I think any of the other Warriors games I've played. Mm. Um, but I did finish. Yeah, the I haven't really played it either. That I like it all. Yeah, I never did the DLC for that one. And usually, like I, I like the new characters and stuff they add. I don't even think I liked all the like the the extra characters that were like hidden in the core game. And there's a couple I didn't do there. But whatever. I mean, maybe I'll do it someday. Maybe this game will. Maybe be like, oh, I should go back through and finish that. Mm. I don't know. Uh, but I mean, it's it, it's all voice actor. It has a pretty rad like the demo is like a pretty rad opening cutscene where they're kind of like re showing that like initial battle that they show at the beginning of Three Houses. So I think it's cool. I mean, well, like I said we'll see what happens when it comes out. But at the end of the day, it is a Warriors game. You know, you, you know what you're getting mm-hmm. more or less based on the name alone. So. Those are the two big things I wanted to talk about this week, though. I have mm. some other things, but I'll save them for next week. Um, so, that's it. Nick? Yes? Were you talking about Stranger Things? Yes, I finished part one of season four. Oh, no. So, is this season broken in half? Like, I haven't really been... Yes. Yeah. Not in half. Okay. So, sort of. The last, like, like two episodes are supposed to be two hours piece, right? So, episode... The, well, the, the second to last episode... Is an hour and a half, and then the very last episode is two and a half hours. Okay. Um, so why, is it, two hours well, why is it part one? I guess that's what I'm confused about. Because they, they called the part that came out Memorial Day weekend volume uh, one, and uh, then okay. volume two. It's not like not in half, because the first part was like seven episodes, and then okay. the next part is going to be two. But it's like four hours of. Oh, fuck that. Yeah, it's, like, it's weird. I don't know why they're doing it like that. Honestly, this is there with another show I watched too, where they're like, "Hey, it's the final season. Here's four episodes to get you started," and then like viewer the retention come out for seven months later. Stranger Things. Do you need viewer retention for Stranger Things? You don't, because this this season's fucking excellent. Because I watched it also. I haven't you... finished it though. Okay. Um, but I, I, uh, three or four? I don't remember oh, which man. one. Yeah, okay. I haven't made it. I'm I'm guessing according to you now from the way you just sounded when I said that. Uh oh. <laughs> So I the, on it. Huh. the whole the whole part one of this season is just so fucking good. All the new characters are fantastic. All the Eddie characters is so good. Yeah, Eddie. Literally, I forget what I was talking about. I might have been talking about because I was talking about the first couple episodes with you last week, Mike. Yeah. But like, literally, like they perfected the character archetype of the satanic panic from like the eighties. Yes, with, it's with Eddie so Munson. well done. Like just him just who he is like he's a very nice kid a little weird but like that's about it and he automatically is getting blamed for a lot of things going on because he's into like D D. so i mean like obviously that's not a drug dealer let's be fair okay, I, mean, <laughs> I i hardly considered selling weed you being a drug dealer but um, didn't he also have ketamine did he have i mean he, yeah, he was gonna more, sell, he was gonna sell her ketamine he, she so, looked like a horse <laughs> she did. <laughs> I mean, she passed my horse test. Um, <laughs> but uh, what was I going to say? Um, so obviously, since in Hawkins nothing goes completely right, uh, the guy who's playing Dungeons and Dragons will be blamed for anything weird going on. Mm-hmm. Um, especially when the name of your club is the Hellfire Club. Yep. Um, but no, like I love him. He's perfect. He plays a character agree. perfect. Um. I like I said, all the new characters that they've added to this season are great. All the returning cast is fine as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it I will say some th- there's a lot of um, the build up in the later episodes. Good, and I feel like at a certain point it felt like a little much. Mm. Like maybe they could have trimmed down some of it, but at the same time, like. When you finish episode seven, you're like, I understand why they spent so much time with some particular people. Okay. Um, because it ends up being a a much larger part of the story. So like, it's mm-hmm. one of those things where it kind of feels like, wow, they're really being long winded about like certain characters, and then you get to the the I don't want to say the conclusion because it's not the conclusion, but mm-hmm. you get to like the you know the finale of part one. You're like, oh, okay, that's why they did that. Understandable. And then you move on. 
Um, but what's crazy is there's a lot of things going on that people are like linking from back from like season one into this. Mm. So um, like people are rewatching like the first season right now and they're like, hey, some of these things were hinted to in literally the first episode. Oh, wow. and I was like, that's fucking crazy. Absolutely crazy. Um, I'm trying to think what else can I because I don't want to say too, too much because it's still pretty fresh. Yeah. Um, and it's not like one of them things where you can just sit down and watch an episode because most of them are over. Actually, I think all of them are over an hour long. Yeah, every and single one of them have been. Even episode watched. seven, I was when I was watching it with my girlfriend, I was like, all right, this is ending now. Nope. Mm-hmm. Still going on. All right, now it's ending. Mm, it's I like, had that moment yeah. so many times. Like there me was and Katie times. are watching it because we've watched every single season of uh, yeah. Stranger Things and we've really been enjoying it. Yeah, there was like three times during episode seven. I was like, okay, cool. That's the ending. Because I didn't realize that episode seven was the last one, so mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh, they got a you know, they got a tease, they got a tease for the next couple." Because the next ones come out Fourth of July weekend. Okay, so that's I mean, not uh, horribly wrong to wait at least. Not horribly wrong, and I'm like good on them because they were like, "Hey, let's give it to them on like a long weekend." I'm like, "That's cool," but like I still don't understand. Having watched the first part to completion, don't understand why they're splitting it up unless it's just to build kind of like some tension. I think it's but, just so people don't cancel all their Netflix. And I, I was going to say the same thing. It's so they don't cancel their Netflix before. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. That's true, because, I mean, I'm guilty in, in years past of, like, the new uh, new season of Stranger Things would come out, and I would binge mm-hmm. it all in, like, a day. Oh, uh, yep. Yep, same. So, um, but, no, I, I, I really like where they're going with things. Um, it's, it's really, really, really enjoyable. I can't wait for you to finish the next next couple because it's it gets it goes places you, you really do go places and you get a lot of a, an explanation for things larger than just this season mm-hmm. and it's like incredible because that's you're like, oh yeah i remember I'm that i'm very happy to hear that i've been yeah. like really excited to watch more of it but you know katie's been sick and everything so oh, yeah. when we've watched the first three it was like we've spent like fucking four hours watching this we should probably take a break and that's like one episode yeah i have not watched any of the new season yet it's really good so well Um, what happened was so dj and i were sitting down to watch dinner and he throws on like stranger things season four like episode four and i was like you did not just fucking do that and he's (laughs) like what i'm like i haven't watched any of it i told you this the other day and so we compromised, and we just started it over again, like the the first season. Mm-hmm. And we just watched through all the first season again, and now we're in like somewhere in the second season, which is kind of nice because like we talked about last week, like did not remember a fucking thing about the second season. Mm. And now it's like starting to come back. I'm like, oh yes, yes, yes. I'm like, I remember now. You got the new redhead girl, yeah, with her lifeguard brother. I think he yeah. gets the last. Yeah, no, in the arcade, we were talking about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, did not remember anything. Anything. I completely forgot about um, what's his name's character, Bob. Yeah, so yeah. I watched the recap before I watched the new season because they have a very nice little recap that starts at the beginning when you yeah. start the season. And it's like maybe five, ten minutes long. And it's like it gives you all the info you need. And it's like, okay, this is good. So that's what we did. Um, what I will say, too, is like, I guess I've realized this now after I've played much, much more D&D. It really does feel like a D&D campaign. It does. Essence. It feels like a campaign that has like a main objective with a bunch of offshoots. Mm-hmm. And like possible conclusions. And then it's like, oh, guess what, bitch? We're back in it. Um, so, like, that to me, like, it, it's funny, because, like, I have a much better appreciation now because of the fact that I play D&D. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, just, it's very good. Very, very, very good. And I, I love it very much. And I think this is, like, literally the best thing Winona Ryder has ever put herself into, because she's just phenomenal in every single episode that she is in. I don't know, Beetlejuice is, like, a timeless classic. Beetlejuice That's is true. great, but, like... They're making a second one. Are they? Hmm. Yes. Is she in it? Yes. Then I will watch it. So is Michael Keaton. And oh, then I will Jones watch it. Then I will definitely watch it if Michael Keaton is in it. Is he playing Batman or Beetlejuice? 
Probably both. He's playing oh. Johnny Depp. <laughs> oh. uh, so, yeah. yeah, no, so I don't know. I love Winona Ryder, like, a lot. You're right. She does a fantastic job in this. Mm-hmm. I, I I did see, too, I guess they announced this week that the next season for Stranger Things will be the last one. Yes. So, yeah, but they were like, five. we were only planning on five seasons. We got to tell our full story. We had it all mapped out. This is where we want to go. So let's hope it doesn't turn into Game of Thrones, too. So <laughs> I, I've been hearing like things about what Stranger Things could do, and I really hope that season five is just a bookend to the series. Yeah, and then like I, because people are saying, oh well, they might do like side shows and stuff with it. I'm like, I no, no, I, I just want to that. I don't think we need that. Truthfully, no, I, yeah, I agree. I yeah, feel I like once Stranger Things gets to the end, that should be it. Yep. Like if you want to make like a game. Whatever, that's okay. I yeah, guess. I mean, they've already made a game. Yeah, but I'm saying like, you know, what, what I really like about that is like, is it pours into other games. So like, when I was playing Dead by Daylight, like it has Steve in it, and I'd be playing as Steve. Steve is cool, and like the Demogorgon in the hospital and all, and all that shit. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I really would like to get away from people being like, oh, we need to have thirty of this one thing because it was really good. Like, just just enjoy things for what it is. Yeah, 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 I agree. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting very impatiently for the last two episodes because I want to know what's happening. So, um, but other than that, um, I haven't really done much of anything else of substance. Um, I'm trying to think. No, no I, I was trying to play the 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 Mario Strikers demo, mm. but like it just time was not in my favor. I see. I had shitty times. I just happened oh, yeah. to catch. I just happened to be like eleven o'clock one night, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I'm like I can hop on the Mario Strikers demo. Let me do that so I can actually talk about it." Yeah. Um. But otherwise, you know, I would have had no time to do it. So. Yeah, they're like, "We we we'll play this at midnight." I'm like, "No, I gotta go to work tomorrow." Actually. <laughs> I know. I don't know what they were thinking. I mean, who knows? Maybe they got mm. what they wanted out of it. Nobody knows. Yeah. Um. um. Yeah, you guys ready to go on the news then? Yeah. yeah. All right, so a bunch of newsy bits. So now we're in new season. We are a new season. So, first one, Pokemon Scarlet Violet. They put out a new trailer last week, and it was it was a great trailer, and it was horrible at the same time. At least I think so. Uh, it yeah. was great because it showed off a lot of cool stuff. It's going to be open world, saying so you can yep. go anywhere and do anything you want at the same time. The internet is in love with the new Pokemon, Lechonk? Uh, no. What oh, Lechonk? Small of. No, small of? Uh, small, small of is good. Small of. When you're small here, you're good. small. Have you not seen that image? It's I so haven't good. seen that. It's Olive Garden, and it just has small of on the Olive Garden sign, and then it says, when you're here, you're small, instead of family. <laughs> small of Garden. I really hate when I've seen a couple of people talk about it. I can't remember how they pronounce it, but they're they're not calling it Smoliv. They'll be no, like, I need to shut the fuck up. Like, then they'll be like Smooliv or something. I don't even. I'm Anyone like, says that needs I'm to like, be fucking small like, olive. Like, yeah, I'm it's like, a small oh, olive. Wow. It's Smoliv. Oh my yeah. god, I'm looking at the memes. Or Smoliv. Dude, look at all of the Smoliv uh, fucking memes. They're so small incredibly Jordan. good. I'm gonna I'm gonna post one in general. Here we go. Uh, but it was otherwise for the trailer though they did show off it's got like simultaneous multiplayer people can come in mm-hmm. and do what they want um but we the the big like mystery is they still really didn't show us how this game plays that's true it it, it, it was very like very suspicious that it was just like hey we're going to deliberately not show you gameplay mhm we're just going to show you new features. We're not going to show you what the new features are of this game. Mm-hmm. Like the big, you know, whatever the, you know, the gimmick is. We're not going to show you that. Here's the legendaries, you know, whatever. Uh, here's a handful of new Pokemon. But uh, yeah, we're just not, we're holding stuff still close to our chest. Okay. Mm-hmm. I guess that's what you want to do. I'm sure it'll be fine. Whatever you decide, I just kind of want to know what game I'm getting. That's all. Um, the legendaries look like motorcycles. And there was a rumor before that trailer came out that they were going to be like the primary like 
method of giving getting around in this game. So kind of makes sense if the rumors are to be believed, but who knows? Because they didn't show us anything in this game. Not really, no. And then there was that weird, like, super mysterious, like, ending bit, too. Where it was just kind of like crystals, and then a Pokeball flies through. It's like, what does this mean? Don't know. Could be anything. What does it all mean? Yeah. I'm, I'm just going to keep spamming more small of memes in the chat. You can go check them out. <laughs> uh, I don't know oh my you guys have... <laughs> Do you guys have any more thoughts on uh, on Pokemon? I didn't watch the thing, but I did so watch I watched the trailers. It. I watched it. Um, yeah, it was just the trailer. That's all there was. Yeah, I watched the trailer. I think it looks very much like Pokemon. Yeah. No, um, I, I like Smoliv. I like Lechonk. I think they're good uh, additions to uh, the Pokemon, just in general. Um, I did have the same feeling as you, where why haven't we seen how this game plays yet? That made me be like, Hmm, what's going on here? Um, I, I know, I feel like they've got to be holding it close to their chest for some reason. So, it's just like, hmm, what don't we want to show yet for some reason? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I had a question. Is there four-player co-op in this? Yep. Because yeah. it looked like they were showing that. And I was like, yeah. that's neat. Mm-hmm. That is really cool. Oh, I forgot to. The, the internet's very thirsty for the new professors. Uh, yes, yes, they yep. are. They sure are. So there's that. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I don't have much else to say. That's about how the gets. Let's <laughs> talk about the PlayStation state of play. The what? Right. The Capcom state of play? You mean the the thirty minutes of string together trailers? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that wasn't bad. I mean, the trailers that they had were good. I don't know. Maybe it's because I haven't been following. I don't remember there being anything like new, new. Here, right? Like, I feel like we knew uh, Resident Evil 4 remake, which had been rumored forever. Oh, is it? Ru- I thought it was already announced. <laughs> nope, it was rumored for the last two yeah. years. And you know, that's another game, just kind of like this Pokemon one. Yeah, I was just like, have they shown off gameplay or is it just this trailer? It's yeah. just this trailer. This is the only thing they've ever shown. With this one, I'm like, okay, that's cool. I'm like, hey, I don't think the game needs a remake, but what the fuck are you changing? Uh, so that was the interesting part in this remake i noticed a lot of different things from like some of the scenes they were showing and i was thinking this is going to be like a remake on the scale of like final fantasy 7 remake this is gonna drastically change the game i think probably that's kind of what i was worried about and like they said it's not really a game that needs it and there's a lot of people out there too that are just like because Resident Evil 4 was such a sizable game as it was, they're like, yeah. what are they going to cut? Yeah. So, I don't know. And then, the other thing, too, is, like I said, gameplay-wise, we really don't know how it plays. I think that I think Resident Evil 4 played really well, and it's not a game that I would like them to be, like, let's really fuck with this formula. Like, it doesn't need to. Like, yeah. just kind of keep it as close to the what you already have. I don't know. I, I'm interested to see what it is. Yeah, I, I agree. has an event, what, next week? Uh, I don't know. Oh, I know Microsoft does. Belief? Well, yeah, so next week, or it's weird, uh, days, man. Uh, Xbox is running on Sunday, and then there's an extended version of what they're doing on that Monday, I believe. I think okay. that's right. Where it's either going to show off actual gameplay. Yeah. Uh, kind of like a treehouse to some degree. Or a treehouse-esque. Yeah. Um, But then, as far as anything else goes... I don't fucking know. Yeah, I, 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 I can I talk saw, about. The, I saw the whole thing. I can tell you what, what we got here. Which there's well, some no, good we were stuff just about the Capcom. Like, oh, yes, Capcom. Capcom, yeah, Capcom. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, you remember that game that they showed like once and then never even gave us right? a name or anything? Uh, yeah, uh, Capcom is doing one on the thirteenth, by the way. Okay, anyways. No, no I'm oh, yeah, talking Capcom. About Capcom. Capcom. Talking about Capcom. Um, it was the one where everyone thought it was Bayonetta originally, and then uh, like say, the one in space down. or what was it? Um, hold on. It was shown during. Hold on, Capcom next gen title. Uh, let's try that. And it's gotta, it's gotta show up, right? Yeah, Pragmata. We haven't seen anything about that for over a year now. Uh, I think if Capcom's gonna show anything, it might be Pragmata. I'm sure they'll show up more Street Fighter as well. Yeah, I, I will say, since, like, I'm like, not a fighting game fan, but like, I thought the the style they went for with Street Fighter Six looks very attractive. It does. It looks very good. 
I uh, I like fighting games, and I was like, hey, I'll probably play this, even though after Street Fighter Five, I was like, I'm not playing another Street Fighter, because this game sucked. And uh, now I'm just like, fuck, I'm going to play another Street Fighter, aren't Ooh. I? Especially after what they showed. Because, like, here's the thing that makes Street Fighter Six so interesting to me. It's open world. And that's weird. Yeah, that is weird. Like, you, you, you traverse an open world, and then you go up to a guy and you're like, hey, let's fight. And they're like, yo, let's fight. And then you fight like you're playing a normal Street Fighter game. And I, I like that. I, I want to know how that's a thing that's going to come together, how that's going to work out. I, and it seems interesting to me. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting idea. We'll see what happens. And maybe mm-hmm. it'll be even better with Super Street Fighter Six. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> we didn't get a, a new Street Fighter after Street Fighter Five. There was no, like, Super Street Fighter Five arcade tournament. Well, they had a Street edition. Fighter Five. They did have a Street Fighter Five arcade edition. Wasn't that just all the stuff that they already released over time bundled together? That's what those editions are. No, 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 yeah, no, no, no. Those um, editions are. Let me tell you With, how like, some wrong you are. A little bit of retooling. Are. They're not completely new games. So no, I agree with you. They they aren't completely new games. But to say that that's what those additions are is vastly discounting it because I'm going to go ahead and tell you this right now. Uh Street Fighter 4 when they released Ultra Street Fighter 4 after releasing Street Fighter 4, the speed of that game was increased so much that it felt like a different game because the way you had to play it was so vastly different from the way it was originally released. Mm -hmm. And they've done that with other games, such as um, the Street Fighter 2 Turbo Edition that was released on Super Nintendo and that sort of deal, and in arcades. And when they released those kind of, like, uh, releases, that's when I'm like, oh, that's a different game because it vastly changes the way the game is played. Mm -hmm. They did uh, Street Fighter Five arcade edition and a street fighter 5 champion edition oh okay hey i forgot about the championship edition oh yeah it's 12 bucks fuck maybe i should buy it but they didn't do like a super street fighter 5 so who knows maybe they um also for people who are interested in this little tidbit street fighter 6 is a direct sequel to street fighter 3 oh shit so it's a sequel to third strike yeah Holy shit, that's awesome. From what I've been seeing. Bro, I loved Third Strike. That was a great game. Um, I'm watching the trailer right now for Guile, and, like, the game itself looks very good. Like, the the actual artwork of it, like, looks very oh, dude, nice. Dude, yeah, you get to see a Switchblade comb in that trailer. That came out yeah. today. Um, Will I play it? Probably not. Um, But I hope it's popular. It's always good for the FGC to have a good mainstay game, and I feel like... There hasn't really been one. I mean, Guilty Gear's been hanging. Guilty Gear's, yeah. Guilty yeah. Gear's been hanging around. I feel like Tekken's done. Like, Tekken, like, is so tired and just... Like, Tekken 7, specifically. Yeah. Still, like, kind of old hat at this point. It was a really good game, though. I really like Tekken 7. I thought it was It's good. very good. It's just, I think it's time. Yeah, I mean, they've already gone through all their DLC. They don't have any more content for it. It's definitely time to move on with Tekken. I also do, like... I don't know if you noticed, but they did retool the Street Fighter Six logo. I bit. did see that. I did see that. Yeah, and I think it it did just enough to make it go from like a Fiverr logo to like, okay, this is actually fun. Yeah. All right. Should we move on to the next thing, which is uh, more th- from the state of play? Yeah. All right. So we talked briefly about the Resident Evil Four thing, and that was the next thing on the agenda. But after that came um, the announcement of the release date of Stray. And Stray was a game that was shown when they first showed off the PS5. Uh, You play as a cat in a post-apocalyptic world that's run by robots. And it's like a little adventure game and uh, exploration. It looks really cool. It's coming out in July. And if you buy the new PS Plus subscription, you get it for free. So so there's that. It's included in it. Nice. Uh, July 19th is the release. Uh, Next, we had something that even the developer of this game didn't know was coming, apparently. (laughs) Uh, Have you seen this, Nick? Mm, No. Okay. So Insomniac, Insomniac, uh, about a year ago, like, said... Spider-Man will never come to the PC. It will forever be a Sony exclusive. 
Uh, spoiler alert, Spider-Man was announced for the PC. It's no longer just going to be a console Sony exclusive. So uh, Spider-Man Remastered is releasing in August, I believe. And, uh, I mean, it's the PS5 version of Spider-Man. So, yeah, there there we go. I'm super looking forward to this because uh, I want to play Spider-Man on my Steam Deck. <laughs> hey, that'd be a good game to put on, yeah. Just say right? Way. Mm-hmm. Uh, next, we got an announcement for a VR version of Resident Evil Village on PlayStation 5. Yep. And uh, honestly, sick, because Resident Evil Village, as much as I complained about the way it ran, is a damn good game. So them adding VR to it can only make it better, in my opinion, if they mm-hmm. don't fuck it up. Um, after that, we... Okay, so... <sighs> Yeah, they, I know they ended with this. The thing on the list I'm looking at um, is out of order. So I'm going to hop to uh, two things that I skipped over. One of the first things that, that was shown at this was um, announcing that Tunic will no longer be Xbox exclusive and is now coming to PlayStation in September. Yeah, September is when uh, PlayStation will be getting Tunic. And Tunic's a really good game. If you haven't played Tunic, you should definitely play Tunic. So uh, there you go. Uh, The Callisto Protocol had a trailer. I think this is the... So now that I've looked into this more, I need to double check, but I think this is the game that's made from people that originally worked on Dead Space. Yes, Yes, it is. You you can tell just by looking at that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, So we got a new trailer today, which uh, I'm going to say this because it's actually kind of interesting to me. The trailer we got today during Summer Games Fest was the uncensored version of the trailer they showed during PlayStation State of Play. Which is really weird, and like I said in our chat, that's very own brand for Sony to censor something like that. Oh, yeah. And then have to have an uncensored version of it shown on a different company's or a different stream. So, so there's that. Yeah. Um, th- also, that game looks excellent. That game looks fucking excellent, though. It does. Also, another thing to note about this game, it has been uncoupled from the PUBG universe now. It has, yes. Yep, yep I see that. Because they were like, how do we how we fit this in? We can't? Damn. Crazy how <laughs> we couldn't do that. <laughs> oh, so sad. Mm-hmm. But it, it literally, like, if you had told me it was a Dead Space sequel, and I, I would have totally believed you. Mm-hmm. Like, without even thinking about it. Like, it looks so much like Dead Space. I want to say, too, it looks... I mean, this might be a hot take. No, maybe not. It looks better than the remake of Dead Space 1. Absolutely. (laughs) It it seems like it understands what made Dead Space Dead Space, and if you look at the remake of Dead Space 1, it it looks like they're just like, yay, flashy, shiny lights, bright spaces, look at all the reflections, and it's like, where's the darkness? Where's the spooky atmosphere? It's no longer here, and I don't like it. And uh, Callisto Protocol has that, and I'm like, Yes, because it looks really good. So I agree. I like that game a lot. So we got that. Um, I don't know what this is. I did see the trailer. Um, season: A Letter to the Future. So apparently, this is a, a exploration game. Where, <sighs> okay, let me try to explain this because it seems kind of cozy, but also like the overall plot isn't told to us and it feels like it's going to be something very very sad but um essentially it's just like an open world game where you go around and explore this world that's kind of foreign and everything and you take like pictures and get like information and then bring it back to like the place you stay and like report to like people like what the outside world is like and it looks really interesting i don't know what they're going to do with this or where they're taking the idea of this. And apparently this game had like a a bad development or something. I don't know exactly what it was, but um, yeah. So there's that. Uh, Eternal Nights. This is Persona, but even more of a dating sim than Persona. So that looks cool. Uh, I want to talk about two of the games that when I was watching them, I was like, okay, both of these look sick. So, um, the creators of Ollie Ollie World are making a new game coming to PlayStation and PC, and it's called Roller Drome, and it is a like roller derby game that's also a third-person shooter that also seems to have like a arena 
shooter vibe going on and like Tony Hawk and like Jet Set Radio vibes and it's got this really cool sick looking art style and uh this was my favorite game that was shown during the entire um the entire uh, conference. It looks mm. awesome. So uh Roller Drone, that that game looks sick. And then the last thing I'm going to talk about from this conference was uh we we saw Final Fantasy 16. We did. I don't know how you feel about Nick. How do you feel about this, Nick? I still feel like we haven't gotten a lot of information from them. Um, I see that we're getting the combat, the active combat back from like yeah, FF7 15. and 15. Yeah. Um, not a, I've never been a huge fan of that combat, but if they can get it mm-hmm. to work for this, then cool. Yeah. Um, I was, I, I know that like supposedly uh, the newer edition of Final Fantasy 15 was supposed to fix a lot of the combat issues that I had because remind you, I played that game when it first came out, mm-hmm. pre patches, pre everything. Yeah. Um. So if that's the case, if it, if they made it better, the cool. Royal Edition. Yeah, I never played the Royal Edition. It's it's definitely worth checking out, or if you don't want to check it out, just play the DLCs. Yeah. Because they're like two hours or three hours a piece if you just run straight through them, and they're really good. Yeah. Um. um but yeah, like I that game supposedly was supposed to come out this year, and then they're like mm, a year from now. Summer yeah, 2023. summer twenty twenty three. Yes. Um. Yeah. Now here's the thing, uh, Mike, you said it earlier, and um, I'm I'm gonna say it. This just looks like Game of Thrones and Final Fantasy. <laughs> it straight up just looked like Game of Thrones and Final Fantasy to me. Uh, they were all fighting over this one like territory and that sort of deal. And, like, there was a big, huge battle, and it was very clearly, like, showing the different sides and the different people that were at war in the battle and, like, their takes on it and this, that, and the other. And I was just like, I'm just getting so many Game of Thrones vibes right now. And, like, every single one of the, like, nations and shit that has uh, a stake in the battle has, like, a different thing. So, like, if someone has Ifrit, someone has fucking Bahamut, and so mm-hmm. on and so forth. And I, I, it looks cool. I think it'll be fun. It it's looking like it's running better now, so good. And um having a look or like a feel like Game of Thrones isn't necessarily a bad thing if it's done correctly and if it doesn't fall flat on its fucking face. Yeah, but then again, like that's always that setting has always been a That has always been a major portion of yeah. uh Final Fantasy as well. Yeah, you're correct. And I was gonna say that too. Um but it just gave me like due to the way it looks, it just gave me really like major game of thrones yeah. vibes so so there's that the only other thing i really want to say about this state of play is i just yeah how much it was organized because i'd yeah, be it's... like it'd be it's like oh, it. here's a yeah here's a here's a game from capcom and then they'll like play like three three trailers that maybe not all are from capcom and then they'll end with like, oh, and this game is coming out on July 1st. And then it'll just go into, like, a random trailer. Yeah. And I was like, what the... F-? I'm like, I don't know. Like, could you could you put stuff in between all of them? Or, like, group them a little bit better? And then once the once the Final Fantasy one ended, it's just like, that's it! Bye! <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> yeah. what? <laughs> you could have even been like, this is the last game. Nope, you're just like, goodbye. Like, nothing. I also I felt like, like the the VR content that they were talking about was very lacking. Oh, speaking oh, of yeah. VR, we didn't talk about that shitty um, the Sony game. Which one was it? Uh, it's the, the Horizon one. The yeah, Horizon yeah, yeah, one. Yeah, 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 it looked yeah, like yeah, shit. Yeah. yeah, it looked dumb. Super dumb. And I, I kept on thinking, I'm like, I'm like, who am I playing as Rayman? Because it had like the floaty hands yeah. everywhere. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right. No, I I know you, you haven't played VR. No, I don't think it looks great. But I know oh. you haven't played VR. That that like you by saying like ah the shitty who am I playing as fucking Rayman? I that's how I, I know, know you've never played VR. Brandon, I... Every game does that because there's a disconnect otherwise because your hands are what you feel when you have the controllers in your hands. So your hands are what's displayed on the screen so that you can do the like things I with the controllers and this that, that and the other. It's this, a really weird this disconnect. Really fucking dumb in this game. I don't know what to it tell did, you. No, 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 no. I was gonna say I, I I agree with you that it looks stupid in this game, but like it being in other games is like a very common thing in general 
but no, you they know, didn't games, like, do it well here. That's, with that's... that with Alex, I'm not like, oh, I'm playing as Rayman. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like this one, I don't know what it was about the hands. Just something in particular. Just all I could think about was like, who am so, I, fucking Rayman? <laughs> they were. That, that's what I was gonna go say. Um, they were very disconnected from the movements you would be making with your actual arms. Yes, that was what the problem was in this trailer, and that's what made me be like. How good is the tracking of this actually? Is the tracking of this bad? Because like PlayStation VR's tracking was pretty shit. And I was expecting VR 2's tracking to be better. But looking at this trailer, I was like, this doesn't look like it's better. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Yeah. So that's why so I was like, uh Maybe well, I mean, who knows? Maybe this was a really early trailer. <laughs> I mean, at this point, I mean, I think it's safe to assume that VR is not coming out until spring of next year. Oh, yeah. I think, in, they, in the, I think that was least. the earliest title that they mm-hmm. kind of threw out there, was just kind of like a spring 2023. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. You know, know you know what else it might be? And I, I thought about this. This might be a pack-in title and is kind of like a tutorial for PSVR, too. Could be. And, and like, those pack-in titles sometimes specifically when they're packed in with games on like PlayStation or Xbox or whatever, they're of a lesser quality, even if they are like the same like series that's like got much higher quality titles already out there. So that was, that was my thoughts on it when I originally saw it. I'm sure it'll be shit. Yeah. I, I I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, Boneworks is a fantastic game. And like they're the only ones that I think has done uh having the entire arm, you know, being tracked instead of just the hand tracking. And yeah. So there's that. Boneworks is really good, is what I'm trying to say. Just play oh, Boneworks really? instead. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it'll be on PlayStation VR. Maybe. Who knows? Maybe. Nobody knows. Not yet. Um but I don't know. That's all I had for State of Play. I don't know if you guys had any other thoughts before we move on. No, not really. All right. Uh, next thing is up there is Sonic Frontiers. They finally showed off gameplay of it. I mean, it was a pretty game, but it also was about as exciting as Hyrule Field is. Mm-hmm. So, a takeaway. I don't really understand what makes this a Sonic game. Maybe you guys can explain. Because it kind of just seemed like he walked around a field and then found puzzles. No, nope, you're right. Was on like rails, and then there was some rings, and I think there was maybe an enemy, like one. Yeah, this felt like a massive tech demo. Also, this was one of the worst trailers they could have shown, and then they showed a much better one on their own streaming thing that they had uh, two days ago, one day ago. Did it make the game seem much better? Uh, yeah, kind of. Just okay. a better trailer. So um, it made it seem like there was more of a purpose to the open world. It had it much more populated with enemies and it showed off a lot more moves that could be done. And as such, I was like, okay, I kind of see what they're going for here now, but they still aren't giving me enough to work with to be like, oh, but I do kind of see more what they're going for. So I think the first trailer we got was a lot more rudimentary and was just being used to show off like quite literally like a tech demo to show off uh, the the movement system and like the way you can get around that sort of deal. However, you shouldn't do that, especially not for a game that's coming out in a few months and that you're trying to sell to people. That doesn't work, you fucking dumbasses. So there's that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I just, I want, to think after seeing the other um trailer that it will be better but i just don't know i don't know i watched like the seven minutes of gameplay on ign or whatever that's what i'm basing mine off of Uh uh-huh didn't list that was just kind of my takeaway just looked boring yeah no i i got you yeah so i mean maybe i mean it looks more fun than sonic adventure 2 (laughs) that's for me (laughs) Uh, I just it, it to me it doesn't seem very fitting. Like you ever see that video where it's like somebody made like a tech demo of Mario walking around in UE4 in like a field? Yeah, it, it That's felt the like vibes that. I get. It 
it felt like that. Sega hired I, that I man. I can't find the meme anymore, and I wish I could. But um, the the picture when my when my friend uh when me and uh, GP were talking about it, um, the picture I sent him, which I can no longer find was uh, the Windows XP startup screen with all the rolling hills and everything, and then it just... <laughs> oh my god. It had the, the assets of Sonic Frontier in the background shrunk down and really tiny. <laughs> it was so good. I laughed so hard when I saw it initially. <laughs> but yeah, um, it, it doesn't look complete from the first trailer we were shown. The second trailer looks more like a game, but it also kind of has that feeling of, like, I'm not sure if they knew what direction they wanted to take this in. And as such, I don't know how this is going to turn out since there's only a, like, there's only a few months left until it releases. I mean, I'm watching the, like... the gameplay video right now. I'm just like, I'm not, like, what's happening here? Yeah, it just kind of walks around and finds puzzles and then does them really quick, and then just keeps going. It's like they tried to make Breath of the Wild, mm -hmm. and then just threw Sonic in it. Yeah. And, except they took out all the weapons, all the enemies, mm -hmm. and just left the shrines, but then they're out in the open. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree. I mean, and I will say, like, some of, like, the, the Sonic, like, level geometry looks interesting, but it's, like, it seems like the game is, like, it's very it's soulless. Something. It's yeah. soulless. There's nothing there. Yeah, which is too bad because it's their takeaway from this is probably going to be like nobody wants this, and okay, I don't so, necessarily think that's true. I think they just want it to be better. All right, that's so it. I'm going to post this for you in general. Go to 9:27 and then look okay. at that trailer, which is the one we got on June 7th. And you can see where there's definitely a lot more going on here in this trailer. Like, absolutely a lot more going on. And this is what they should have shown originally. Oh, see, that's much cooler. I didn't see this. Right? This, because they didn't show it. <laughs> that's the thing. Like, that's kind of more what you would want to expect to see. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, yeah, that's... That's and I guess uh, IGN's now put up a video of a more in depth uh, thing for it, and it's like that looked so much better than the the shit we were shown originally, and I just, just don't understand what the hell they're trying to do. I don't know. Oh, look, you draw circles around enemies and then they explode. Yeah, with uh, yeah. Wind, great, fantastic. Yeah. I think my favorite comment I saw. Um, about that trailer was, damn, Sonic's so fast he's outrunning the game engine. Oh my god. <laughs> so, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Maybe this is just a really bad first showing and they're mm -hmm. sitting out a lot of really cool stuff, but I just I kind of find it hard to believe. Yeah, hey, I so, feel you. I feel the same way. Well, you said it. it's too close to release mm -hmm. and uh, there's just there's too much missing. Yep. But, yeah, we'll see. Um... Uh, do you guys have anything else to talk about on Sonic? No, absolutely no. not. I have not watched anything with uh, Summer Games Fest, so I don't know what you want to talk about with that. I watched the, the whole thing. In your court. Yeah, tell I watched me. some of it, and um, yeah, I don't, I don't really have anything to say about any of it, because none of it really interested me. Yeah, I feel you there. I will. I will like to give us. I do want to give a special shout out um, to Goat Simulator Three for being an absolutely fucking fantastic trailer. I don't know if you've even seen that yet, Mike. But uh, there's a Goat Simulator Three trailer that starts out recreating the Dead Island Two trailer, where the guy's like walking with headphones and everything. And they hyped up this trailer by being like, we've waited so long for this, and it's finally here. And then it starts out, and it's literally playing out like the Dead Island 2 trailer. And then just chaos ensues, and, and it's fucking goats, and it's just Goat Simulator. And it, it was just trolling the entire audience. But it's a great recreation trailer, and it's really fucking funny. Uh, and it's the game is called Goat Simulator 3, because... Uh, ha ha, there never was a Goat Simulator 2. They just skipped over it and they just memed it up, more or less. 
But yeah, I thought that was a really cool uh, element. They did show the Clister Protocol again. They showed the uncensored version of the trailer uh, mm -hmm. that was shown at the State of Play. That looks super cool. Um, the the uncensored version of the trailer essentially amounted to uh, how many times and how many gruesome ways can we kill the main character? And it was pretty fucking sick. We got a Saints Row announcement and an immediate demo, which the demo is just the ability to create your character ahead of time. Uh, one of the big things, and pretty much the only big takeaway from this, and I know you don't care about it, and I really don't care about it either, Nick, but um, we got The Last of Us Part 1 announced, which oh, was yeah. already announced this morning by Reddit. So yeah, um, <laughs> there's that. Um, but no, The uh, Last of Us Part 1, which is a remake of the first Last of Us game. But, like, looking at it, I was like, this doesn't look like that big of an upgrade. And then they showed side-by-side -side comparisons, and they did, like, the little wipe thing where you, like, pull the screen over to, like, show the difference between it. And I was looking at it, and I was like, is this enough to warrant your $70 price tag? And my conclusion was, fuck no. And, um, yeah, it's just really weird. I think, again, the big thing for The Last of Us Part 1 that made this announcement even remotely interested, uh, interesting is they've already announced a PC version of it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's pretty crazy, because that really does show that Sony is dedicated to releasing more PC versions of their games, especially when you take your major franchise, announce a brand new one in the series, even if it is a remake, and then immediately announce that you're also making a PC version. A remake, Don't wait remake. four years. Just immediately announce. Mm -hmm. I was like, I did, I did like, there was one game that did look really good to me, but I've already seen it before, and that was the, the Shredder's Revenge. TMG yes, uh, Shredder's Revenge, phenomenal. six player online mm -hmm. co op, Come as on. well as releasing on Game Pass next week. So, uh, I'm gonna play that next week, and I'm super excited for it. It's very good, it's great. Um, but yeah, no, nothing else really piqued my interest during the Summer Games Fest. Um, I'm excited for the Xbox and Bethesda showcase mm -hmm. on Sunday. Um, but I don't, it's weird. I don't really know what to expect from it. So I'm just kind of going into it and just seeing what we get. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I feel like there'll be some good surprises there. Yeah. Yeah. They're saying Perfect Dark and Fable will not be there, is what the rumors are saying. I think Perfect Dark is like kind of in a little bit of a development hell right now. Yeah, I think so as well. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Because they were, I think they were tapping. Um, they said, yeah, they, they came out and said they were tapping Crystal Dynamics to help make it. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, which was they quite must weird. be having trouble then. So, yeah, I don't know what yeah. else we're gonna get though. Uh, Viva Pinata, maybe <laughs> or Phantom Dust. Mm -hmm. I mean, that game never came out, right? They never did the remake. Oh, they did. They did announce something today ahead of the uh, Xbox uh, showing. Um, they announced that Xbox Game Pass is coming to smart TVs. That is uh, very cool. Specifically, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. right now, uh, the Samsung smart TVs. But yeah, that was that was pretty neat and out of left mm -hmm. field. Field. Yes, that is. That was a big surprise. I mean, I think we all saw that's where they were headed. Mm -hmm. We knew like this day was coming. Yeah, and now it's here. Pretty great. Big fan. Mm -hmm. Anything else? I don't think so. Uh, the only other thing I, I would say is so uh, there is rumor that Nintendo's going to have their direct next Wednesday. Okay. Based on it's, it seems like it's it, it is good, solid speculation. Um, but it's based on a it is when Nintendo usually has theirs that week. Mm -hmm. um, generally they do theirs on Tuesday but I mean Wednesday whatever they wait till you know Summer Games done or Summer Games Fest is over mm -hmm. um, and, but the other thing is though too apparently because this came out on Reddit someone got sent uh, it was like an offer to get a demo or not a demo like uh, the game Neon White yeah and, that was announced with a release date that's next week Mm -hmm. So they're supposed to, but the embargo was supposed to break on the 15th at 9 a.m. for like the gameplay and everything. 
Yeah, they and... showed some today, actually. It releases on the 16th of June. Yeah, so, but apparently there's a bunch of embargoes breaking on the 15th, so they're like, oh, it seems like that would be, you know, while in line with uh, Switch or uh, Nintendo mm-hmm. uh, Direct, especially considering Neon White was, I think, originally unveiled in a Direct, like, more than a year ago, like somewhere in 21. Possibly. It looks it's, really good. Yeah, I just remembered. Hmm. I just remembered it because it popped up on my Twitter that there's a guy who works for Microsoft named Matt Booty. <laughs> oh man I'm booty Matt booty my bo- well if it was like M.A. booty at, at like Microsoft would be like my booty like that's his email address like there's yeah. some places that will take like a couple letters of the first name and a couple yep. letters of the last name so my, like, booty. My, my, my booty <laughs> my booty at microsoft.com <laughs> exactly my booty yeah that'd be unfortunate <laughs> but endless laughs. Uh, uh the only thing I saw today that I liked. Yeah. Uh even though I don't play the game, Fortnite got among us crewmates is backpacks. That's funny. And they yeah, flail, they too. flail around when you walk. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. Um I don't think I have anything else this week to speak of. Mm. Same. Yeah, same. You guys ready to wrap up then? Yep. Sure. All right. Well, Thank you, everyone, for listening to us tonight. Don't forget, you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google, Amazon, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, we also can check out our website, game-crunch.com. Mm-hmm. If you want to reach out to us, we're on Facebook, Twitter, or you can send us an email, gamecrunchcast at gmail.com. Brandon, yeah. any final thoughts? No, I'm good. All right. Nick? Uh, No. Okay. Well, that said, my name is Mike Anastasia. You can find me online. I'm Clash Penguin on Twitter or your favorite gaming console. Until next week, game on. Game on. Game. Yo, is this a first-person version of uh, Hotline Miami? Because it looks like it. That would be weird. Oh, it just got weirder. What the fuck is this game? Kickmaster 3000. It's Kickmaster. Oh, I hope so. Oh, was that Day of the Tentacle? Yeah, that's the one. I, I don't know. Anger foot. Anger foot! <laughs> All right, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm in. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm definitely in. It's a crocodile. Someone give me a door to kick in. <laughs>